Alright viewers, I appreciate you tuning in. It's been way too long, I know. All I can easily say, and it's not an excuse, life's been happening, but we're going to make the best of it. Right now we're going to be covering one of the best binders I personally own. Honestly, the quality is unmatched, and let's go ahead and show you what I'm going to be looking at. This right here is an amazing full grain binder custom made by Amanda LaFomme. What's special about this binder here is it comes with nine pockets, they're 20 purple pages, it's a zip up binder, side loading trade binder, so authentic full grain like I clarified. It is lined on the inside with micro suede and it's built to last a lifetime. So let's go ahead and actually like take a look at this and I'll kind of explain to you all that don't know a bit more information about leather. So first off, there's many ways we can look at this binder, I really want to give you the beautiful angles. What's nice about it is they couldn't even have machines print out, mass produ produce these. Essentially what happened was when I spoke with support and their team for a while throughout the making of these binders, they pretty much advised us that when they were being made, they actually had to go to having people hand carve these just because of the intricacy and the amount of work and time and effort put into these binders. It's not ridiculously big or small. Honestly, it's a fair size. I wouldn't want any bigger. We'll do some comparisons in a moment. But now that I've kind of showed you the front side here, what's even this design? For some of you that may not know, I am a huge fan of the Orcus archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! So on the front we have Galatea, again made by Amanda LaPalm. I'll show some links below in the description. On the back we have Longearsu. They're both Link monsters, the Link 2 and Link 3 respectively. I'm not too picky, honestly, on this little zipper here. It's a really nice, like, I guess it's leather itself with a little bit of a clip and a pinch. I'm trying to get the best focus I can on in it for you, but other than that, there you go. So as you can see, it's it's nothing fancy. I don't know if I would change it, but it's a nice, like, aesthetic to the binder that's a zip of itself. So let's go ahead and open it, too. You might as well probably be looking at my collection in the meantime, but like I, we said here, it's lined with the micro suede, so it's really nice premium quality. But what's unique about these purple pages here that I've seemed to notice and love is they're really great on clarity. Like, you can look through images and cards you've stored through your binder and the quality is pretty much unmatched. But, let's say I pulled out a few cards here. Within this sleeve, once you open it up and slightly start turning it, you can see that it's slightly uh, translucent, I suppose. You're gonna see some of these sleeves that you use under other artwork, but that's not a problem because honestly, it shows you the surprise once you turn the page. It looks really nice. I can't really describe it any other way. I guess in the shortest words, you lift out cards and there's blank spots in your binder. With the purple pages, you're going to see something behind it, but it's not that bad. Honestly, um, overall quality too, like when you're flipping these pages, when they come in, it, let me get to the middle for you, it'll be easier that way. Basically these pages are held in very nicely by these little uh, screws, so to speak. And they come in, you could always just unscrew it, but there's these three little springs. And when there's 20 pages, like I said, you could always get refills and replacements should they eventually get scuffed, damaged, marked out, whatever you want to do it. Be it showing a collection, a trade binder, the Orcus Binder is really honestly something to be treasuring, in my opinion. I'm sure other people can go for, you know, Amanda La Palm's pretty big in the community now, and with her making 500 of these, it was a difficult process. I'm pretty confident of that, but it was worth not only the wait for a finished product, but a good quality product at that. Let's talk about the, you know, different types, I guess, if you want, before I even start really showing you the collection of, like, what's the whole purpose of us going full grain here. Full grain is definitely the top quality because it's not separated from the top grain or split layers of the hide. The second best quality is top grain, like I mentioned. That's obtained by splitting the blemished hides. And even though it's durable, it tends to, you know, stretch permanently over time and it shows that wear kind of like on your wallets. But let's go ahead and show some side-by-side -side binders while I continue talking about it. Here we go on the right, we got an Ultra Pro, just a basic, similar leather, not micro suede, but they're average binders. It's literally just a little bit longer, but not so much as wide. We'll stack it right on top so y'all can get that visual. Not nearly as wide. 
And that's the height, like that's no difference, right? That's flush. You could see about how much bigger it is, but it's not that much bigger. And then you have the Z Folio X. Let's put the Orcus Binder on top of that flush so y'all can see that. Again, Galatea and the Orcus Binder that Amanda LaPon made is not that bad. Same height for the Z portfolio, but you're given about an inch and a half, and a half extra room here. And then if we maybe compared it to, let's say, something smaller like uh, just these small four park pockets of like, you know, Ultra Po. Stand it right on top here. The third best is the corrected grain of leather. Getting back on that topic, it's produced using the skin layers that remain after the top split off from the corium, so it's usually sanded down into like accessories, footwear, furniture, you name it. And then here's comparing it to the 4 Ultra Pro binder side, and that's again totally folded up, as you can see. It's the perfect size in my opinion. And you can go on and show different binders, but I really want you all to get the grasp of how amazing the size is, the work put into the binder, the stitching is unreal, like I'm really trying to get you all to see those grooves and not only enjoy the artwork, but I'm really going to treasure this for a lifetime personally. And then besides the corrected grain, we got the fourth, which is the bonded leather, it's just leftovers from the hide, which includes dust and shavings, but most companies don't tell you that. And it's used for book binding, fashion accessories, maybe footwear and furniture too. I'm not a master or knowledge mine on like grains, but that's the top four. Right here, best quality full grain. The second is top grain, which I didn't even mention. It's used to produce like, you know, the swagger within the binder or handbags and jackets. Third is corrected grain, and then the fourth is that bonded leather, but Let's go ahead and get a bit of a better angle so I can show you what's in the binder. I'm not only displaying the binder, but it's my own personal collection, what I hold dear to me. Well, I'll let you have a little experience with that since you haven't seen any videos in a long while. You all deserve it, honestly. So once we open up the binder, I've got the original Basic Energies from Pokemon because I also play that TCG. And usually Basic Energies don't rotate except the fairy that's kind of in the middle. So that's why my display pages for the first. After that, I'll just let you kind of glance. I definitely love the Egyptian gods growing up as a kid. Right here we've got a uh, BLS Ghost Rare and the Stardust Ghost Rare, first dead and unlimited. This is Ultimate Rare of the Blaze Ultimate Dragon. Got my Staff Champions Festival, I really loved going and judging that time. Lots of Dark Magician cards. I'm really not the biggest fan of Dark Magician, but it's iconic. I'll definitely say that. So why not kind of just collect everything involved? More of, again, the fusions, Dark Magician, all the different types of, you know, Guardian weapons. Alphabetic Gamma, some tokens. Gate Guardian's eventually going here, haven't decided. These are actually a treat. I'll pull this one out because I love Trishula as well, but this is my Collector Rare. You may not have the best effect on it, but it's really nice Trishula. I've loved the Ice Barrier type for a long time. Mahavelos. Got the synchro of that out now. A little bit of an ultimate rare page, really nice. I loved Front Guardian, especially in my childhood time. I'll get the other Ujamas eventually and just put them up there because why not? They're more iconic than anything. Just some nice little synchros. Technically, yeah, that's like a proxy for if I choose to get the Seeker Rare, I haven't decided yet. This is a blank spot for anything, really. I have the x Head Cannon in my deck right now, currently for GOAT format, so that's why that's a blank. This is a division. These are just sleeps for the whole different game, and so that'll divide it into what we call the Premium Collection. I'm getting the Seeker Rares especially. My favorite right now is this one here, Zero the Mant. It looks beautiful. It's near mint for Seeker Rare. May not be pulling up the best because of lighting, but I promise you it's really nice. If y'all want to get a better look at this, go ahead and check out my Snups. Capital D, Duelist, and then capital X, Duelist X. Can't miss it. 
And these are just a bunch of Go formats, of course, for my three main decks. If I need to tech in anything or swap it out, this is basically where it would, this magic happens for Yu-Gi-Oh. This over here is just favorite spells. Eventually I'll get the F. Still have my movie pack sealed, Obelisk of Tormentor. I bet none of... Little to none if anyone ever actually collected these, but these are the first few cards that came out for the Duel Links, and I've got the gold stamp, so technically a first, and then the silver stamp first, you know, on limbs. All the rest don't have those little I have Anubis stamps anymore, so definitely try to look out for those if you do. Just some more iconic ultimate and childhood membering cards. And that's pretty much that. On the back we've got the one Galatea and some other spare tokens, but all in all, great binder. And I have forgot to show you the best for last. Personally, this is mine, but 343 out of 500, only by purchasing the binder. Again, this is by Amanda LaPalm. It's in a wonderful field center. It's not that heavy. It's a little bit heavier than a business card, a little bit thicker than cardboard, but not too much. It's still malleable, but its design is perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Just really appreciating, again, the art, the Orcus lore, the whole story for the world legacy. It goes deep, way back past Naturia. Maybe I can make that another video one day. But I really hope you all enjoyed. Again, it may not be the best quality video, but it was a well-deserved one. I appreciate you all watching, and look forward to the next video.